Hi everyone, welcome to the live session. For those of you who may not know, I'm doing a 10 minute live yoga break right now. So it's a nice gentle flow to manage stress, to get some deep breathing practice at the end of the day. If you are practicing with me, please do get a mat, a blanket like the one that is there, even a towel would do. And you can also bring a chair and we will begin. So come join me on the mat. I'm going to set the mic in a comfortable position, cross leg position. You can even do this on a chair if it's not comfortable to sit on the floor today. This practice is suitable for everyone as long as you don't have fever and you have the energy to do some gentle stretches. So let's close our eyes, take a deep breath in and exhale it out through the mouth. Just as if you are blowing a candle out. So inhale and exhale through the mouth. Each time you come back to this breath, try to make your exhalation a little bit slower and we will breathe like that three more times. So inhale, exhale through the mouth slowly, lengthening your exhalation and then take another deep breath in. Exhaling. Now take one more breath like that. Just remember you don't force the breath. You simply observe the breath and mindfully see what's the best pace for you today. So inhaling and exhaling through the mouth. Now we'll start adding some dynamic movement to it. So bring your hands forward, palms facing each other, thumbs facing up. As you inhale, take the hands all the way up like you reach for the fingers, reach for the sky with your fingertips. And exhale, bring the hand down from the side. Let's do that five times now. Inhale, rise up like you want to get taller. Someone's pulling you up by the fingers. And exhale with control, bring the hands down. Inhale, reach. Exhale, slowly palms facing down. Bring the hands down. Two more like that. Inhale, reach up. Really find that length, that lift in the body, in the spine. Exhale, bring the hands down. Last time, inhale to really recharge yourself and set the tone for the practice. And exhale, bring the hands down. Now let's move to some neck movements. So very gently bring the chin to chest and then look up as you inhale and as you exhale chin to chest. If you notice, I'm doing these movements at a slow controlled pace, not too fast. So keep that in mind as you gently activate this area of the body. One more time. Exhale. Come back to neutral and now let's look side to side, looking over the right shoulder and over the left shoulder. As if you want to look back, turn back and look at what's behind you as you do this movement. Couple more. Again, coordinating with the breath. So you exhale as you turn and inhale as you come to neutral. Let's do this one more time on each side and to the other. Now let's make it full neck circles just for three rounds on each side. So complete neck rotation gently bringing the chin to chest and then all the way back. Taking your time. We are in no rush today. And then let's turn to the other side and continue moving like that for one more round at your own pace. Once you are done with this round, let's come to neutral, neck neutral, chin parallel to the floor. And again, one more time, take both the hands up 
and this time as you exhale come into a side bend bringing your right hand onto the right side of the body taking the left hand up see if you can reach up with the fingertips of the left hand as you hold this posture and breathe also check in with the right shoulder often what ends up happening is something like this i want you to avoid that keep the shoulder where it's meant to be keep both the shoulders in one line so we are avoiding this today and just reach up and over with time as it gets more comfortable you can start going deeper and deeper without losing form without losing awareness then wherever that is for you today wherever your maximum is today stay there and breathe you can even have a block underneath the right forearm so you can place your forearm onto that block to find that middle ground between being on the floor or between being the between having the elbow straight let's take one more breath here inhale and as you exhale rise up take another breath in and now as we exhale we move to the left side here So side bend, a three or four asan variation in a sitting position, and now you know what we are doing. So let's move into our version of the posture and hold it here. Remember, the posture can look different on all of us, so you don't have to do exactly what I am doing or what someone else may be doing in this practice or any other practice. You find the position for yourself that is moderately challenging, and you hold it there. check in with the right elbow see if it's straight can you straighten it a bit more and let's take a couple more breaths here trying to find maximum expansion across the lungs with each inhalation and trying to find control over our exhalation one more breath in x he and as you exhale release as you inhale take the hands up reach up one more time and bring the hands down if you would like you can now move into gomukhasan which is the cow face pose so bringing the right knee above the left if this is difficult you can modify it and i'm going to show you how with a couple of blocks those who are comfortable should move into gomukhasan now if you are modifying it you can sit up on a block or on two blocks so once you find that height it gets a bit easier if this is also not comfortable modify it by straightening the bottom leg and coming into this variation if that's comfortable all right so with the variations out of the way let's take our position one knee stacked above the other right knee on top again moving to the right side first into that side bend keep the elbow straight for this one and take your hand behind the head so now my left elbow is pointing up to the ceiling and what we are going to do is on an exhale twist as if i want to bring the two elbows to touch coming to the maximum twist then inhale open and reach back Let's move through this. Exhale, twist. Inhale, back. Make sure that your right hand is in line with the hips. Exhale. Inhale, reach. Again, your pace can be different from mine, so feel free to move independently. We are just going to move in and out here. Neither too slow nor too fast. Let's take two more rounds here. Exhaling as we twist, inhaling as we lift the chest to the sky. Exhale and last one. Let's just hold here. The breathing will be a bit shallow as you are in this posture, but do your best to take a couple of breaths, holding your twist for one more moment, and then inhale up. exhale release let's switch legs so whichever variation you were doing you should switch that now and there are many different ways to get into that you can get into it the way i did you can lean forward or find your method for that 
This time moving to the left, take the right hand up and placing your right hand behind the head. Now we know what we have to do on the left. So exhale, twist, inhale, reach up, exhale, inhale, up, exhale, keep moving like that now, inhale, exhale, Inhale, two more. Remember last one we are going to hold. So exhale, inhale and last time exhale and we hold. And remember you are not pulling your head down with your hand. So in case you're doing that, don't do that. The hand is there just for guidance. I can hold this twist without pulling my head down. So that palm behind the head just gives you a sense of direction where your body is in space. You don't have to tug at your neck with the hand. All right. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, release. Release the cross of the legs. And I mentioned in the beginning of the session, it will be good if you have a chair, and I'm going to grab hold of a chair. But if you don't have one, no worries. I will share a variation. So now, because we're working a little bit more on our breath today, any chair, stool or sofa, even the edge of the bed will help with this. If you have a block, you can use that. So this is what we are doing. We come into this uh, tabletop position variation with my elbows resting on the seat of the chair and the block between my hands. And then you take the position, resting your head, if comfortable, on the seat of the chair. So try to keep your knees underneath the hips. We often get into a position like this, but today see if you can come into a nice 90 degree angle and hold it here. Those who have a chair and block can maintain that. Those who don't have a block can keep their palms together like this. And those who don't have a chair, access to a chair right now, you can come into this position here. So choose your variation for this child pose, extended child pose. And while you're holding that, remember to hold the block like this. Often we end up holding the block like this. So try to press it firmly between the heels of the palms. And I hope you've been holding it already for a while. So we will just do three deep breaths here more. It's a short practice, so let's just do three breaths here. Over and above what you've already been doing. Inhale, exhale, trying to bring the elbow, shoulder, hips in one line. Inhale, exhale, one more time, slow breath in and a long breath out. Alright, very gently walk forward. Release the blocks to the side. And now we are going to move into child pose. So gradually we're moving into a prone position. And I think I'm still in the frame. What we are going to do is grab hold onto the, uh, onto the legs of the chair. And then allow the forehead to come to the ground. If the forehead comes to the ground, that's good. Otherwise a pillow, a book or a block can be used to find this position. If you have a chair or a bed that doesn't have an armrest, know that you can do this variation instead. Alright, let's take now four to five breaths here. So this is already a pranayam practice because you're coming into a prone position, a relaxing position, and you're breathing deeply here. At this point, you can start increasing the length of the exhalation so it becomes double the length of the inhalation. So this is a Vishama Vritti Pranayam. Your exhalation is double the length of inhalation. So see with that intention if we can take three more breaths here. If you manage to grab hold of a prop, you would be feeling a nice stretch in the front of the armpits across the shoulders maybe even up to the upper part of the rib cage. That's fine. As long as you don't have any kind of numbness or tingling, you can hold. And of course, there should be no pain. One more breath here. 
exhale and now let's release you can move the props out of the way and I'm going to quickly do that and come to lie down on your belly in Makarasana. So all of us are probably familiar by now with the concept of proning or lying down on our belly. This is the posture that I'm going to leave you with. We are going to do a variation though. So you're going to lie down with your hip bones, the bony part of the hip which is right here. If you, if you palpitate it, you will feel it. That's what's going to come onto a rolled up blanket or a towel of a average thickness. There is no fixed room as much as is comfortable for you. So allowing the hips to rest on this blanket, stacking one palm on top of the other, rest your forehead down. So this is the position, I'm not going to talk in that position because then you won't be able to hear me, but set your posture once like this. Fully relaxed. So what we are going to do is, this is where we ended yesterday's session. You are going to extend the hands forward with your thumbs facing up. Let me scoot back a bit so you can see me. So my toes are pointing straight back, thumbs facing up, palms parallel to each other. Even the hands are parallel to each other. With the forehead down, we are going to lift the hands up and down for a count of seven. Let me show it to you once. So forehead down, one like that two and so on so join me now we'll start the count of seven now one two three keep going four five six seven now we are going to do the same but we will widen the hands a bit let me show you what that is like. So this was your eye. We are going to make a Y shape, do the same. We are going to make a T shape, do the same. A shape, do the same and in a W shape. So now that you know, let's continue making a Y shape. And for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, making a T shape, thumbs continue to be up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now we move on to the A shape. This time thumbs will be pacing down and what you are doing is you are trying to bring the little fingers to touch each other. So trying to bring the palms together as you take them back. Forehead stays on the ground. I may lift it up to top. So let's go for seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now we make that W shape. The elbows are at 90 degrees. This time the thumb stays up again. So for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Bring one palm on top of the other. Rest your forehead on the top hand and take two to three deep breaths here to settle your breath. To become aware of the breath. Something that, that something that's going to help you through the practice and through the stresses of everyday life as well. For the next practice, we are going to use a belt. If you don't have a belt, you can use a dupatta, a stole, anything that allows you to grab onto it and move your shoulders. Let me show you quickly what we are going to do. So coming back to lying down on the belly, fold your belt, make it a comfortable distance, wide. And what we're going to do is as you inhale, lift the hands up, take the belt all the way back, hold for a moment here. And then as you exhale, return back to center. So you can join in now, lift, go back, 
hold and exhale release inhale lift hold hold exhale release continue moving like this at your own pace reaching back lifting up and then slowly with control releasing take an extra breath here if you need to we will do this two more times so inhale reach lift back stay stay and slowly release and one more time inhale reach back hold reach back a bit more one more moment and then slowly release your hands one hand on top of the other this time the opposite hand and again take two to three breaths here to settle down calm down find your breath back in an even pace it's important to take these little mini breaks between postures especially when we're looking to do a calming practice a stress management practice one more breath here and now as you exhale come up into cobra only to transition into downward facing dog so if this posture is not comfortable for you know that you can bend the knees lift the heels up and over time you can pedal the heel one at a time and eventually you can bring both the heels down and once you find your posture for today let's hold it here two to three deep breaths after this we are going to move into the lower body practice even yesterday and somewhat today we have worked more on the shoulders and now we are going to move into working more on the hips so let's bring the right foot forward between the hands bring the left knee down and hold ashwa sanchalan here you can have your hands on two blocks that's absolutely fine or you can have your fingertips on the ground whatever is comfortable for you you can even have your hands above the knees right here navel pulled in strong choose your variation and let's hold for five four three two one let's switch so go back to downward facing dog and this time bring the left foot forward and the right knee down and continue to hold ashwa sanchalan choose your variation and let's be here for five Four, three, two, one. We are not done with these. We will continue. So back to downward dog and bring the right foot forward again. But this time we are going to rise up. So come into a ninety ninety shape with the lower body, knee at ninety degrees on both the legs. Take the left hand up and come into a side bend. So really reaching the left fingertips up over to the right side. Right hand is resting on the right quad. And take a few deep breaths here. To show you from this side. So I'm in this lunge position and I make it a side bend. Without sinking too much to this side, I maintain stability in the lower body. But I reach up and hold. Let's hold for five more. Four. Three, two, one. Excellent. Bring both hands down. Back to downward dog. Just to transition, we are not holding it. Bring the left foot forward, right knee down. Rise up, and we know that it's a side bend here. So find your posture and hold it. If you would like to modify, you could have a block. Underneath the left hand here, you could have a chair. You could do this against the wall as well to find better balance. And for five more, four, three, two, 
one, let's release, both hands down and back to downward facing dog. This is the last one, so let's be here for a couple of moments. And then we will move into a sitting posture on the chair. So let's walk back, walk back, walk back into a mini forward bend. From there, rise up. And I'm going to grab hold of a chair. I would recommend you do that too and I'm going to show you the next posture. So coming to sit on the mat. Next time you inhale, set the posture for goddess pose. We did this yesterday as well. We are going to add a variation. So just to refresh, this is also called Dhruta Utkatasan. Toes are pointing out and knees are above the ankle. So don't let the knee cave in. Your knee should be tracking above the second toe. If that is not comfortable, feel free to reduce the distance between the knees and find that posture which is comfortable for you today. So let's place the hands on the knees, give them some support, bringing the knee back into posture, eh, back into alignment and twist as if you want to bring your one shoulder down, simultaneously gently pressing your inner thigh with one hand and slowly switch. So bringing the left shoulder down in my case, and let's keep turning like that a few rounds and each time that I'm coming into this twist, I'm gently increasing the stretch that I may be feeling in my inner thigh. Let's do that one more time and hold it here this time for five, four, three, two, one and switch the other side. Four, five, four, three, two, one, and rise up. Stay in this position because we are going to add a side bend. So you can grab hold of the seat of the chair if you would like. Nudge your elbow against the right inner thigh or left in your case. Any side is fine. And reach up with your left hand to come into a nice side bend. If you would like, you can release the right hand. Bring the right fingertips to the right foot and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Let's release to the other side. So left elbow towards the left thigh, right hand goes up and see if this posture is comfortable. Feel free to release the left hand down. And as we hold here for five, four, three, two, one, slowly release, gently bring the feet back together and take a breath here. Next time that you exhale, you can make it figure four posture. So we are going to stack the right ankle above the left knee on the left quad. And from here, you can lean over onto your right shin. Shin is this part, which is below the knee and above the ankle. And just put some body weight here. So you will get a nice stretch on the outside of the right leg. And we will hold this position now for a longer count. For those of you who are very flexible, who feel how you have the mobility today, feel free to release your hands to the ground or onto blocks. I'm going to hold it here with you. This itself is a very good stretch. So choose wisely something that's comfortable for you. Keep the ankle flexed. Don't let the ankle be inactive. Also, don't let the foot sickle like this. So keep little above the ankle, that area above the shin. Okay, let's hold for five here. Breathing in and out. Four. Three. Two. And one. Let's release and switch legs. Bring the left ankle up above the right knee. You remember what's to be done. No sickling and no dead ankle, right? Let's place our elbows or forearms upon the shin and find your comfortable posture. So as you're sitting here, check in with your glutes, your sit bones, both should be equally pressing into the chair. Should not happen that you're tilting to one side and your right hip or left hip has lifted. So just be mindful, equal pressure on both the glutes 
or close to equal and then hold it here. Trying to make the shin parallel to the floor and it's okay if we are somewhere here today over time. Maybe we can bring the shin parallel and then take the hands down. Five more. So breathing in and out for five. Four, three, two, and last one. Let's release. Now that we are on the chair, we will do one more chair stretch, which is going to be the twist. So I'm going to show it to you from another direction as well, but I'm sitting sideways and I turn back, taking my hands onto the backrest of the chair. And let me turn around to show it to you. So let me show it from this side now. So both knees forward and I grab hold of the backrest with both hands and I turn. So notice I'm not turning like this and my lower body is not moving. So my lower body stays fixed. I move from the upper body like my chest wants to face the side or come parallel to the backrest. Set your posture. Knees can be together as well but firmly pressing into the ground, not dead. Five. Four. Actually, we'll hold it a little longer. So let's start the count to five now. We'll do about seven to nine counts on the other side as well. So five now. Four. Three. Two. One. And let's release and turn to change sides. I'm going to tell you another interesting trick that you can try to deepen this twist here. So first just set your regular posture that we did on the other side. And what you can do now is press this leg into the chair. So as you press it into the chair, you get extra traction and leverage and you can push against that. And doing that will give you a little deeper stretch. So just experiment with that and maybe you can include it then in your regular practice. I want to hold this twist a little longer so I'll start my count after a bit because this is such a good way to open the chest, to open the upper back and we don't do a lot of twisting movement in normal everyday life so let's give it some time here. An open chest, open upper back means better lung capacity, means better pranayama practice so then the benefits are cumulative. Alright, now I'll start the count for five. Stay four, three, two, and one. Let's release and come to sit forward. Now we shall rise up the chair and I really like to include this in my chair yoga practices that we rise up and sit back down at least five times. So on an inhale, let's rise up. And as we exhale, see if we can sit back with control. Inhale up for two and exhale, sit down. Three and sit. Four. You should do that during the day at least 10 times, 15 times, 20 times. Just to get into the habit of getting off the chair because sometimes it's just that muscle memory you need to get off the chair and do something else. So let's do five or six more and I'm going to give some of you the option to rise up and down on a single leg. So let's say you rise up, one foot is lifted and you sit back down. Totally optional. Rise up and sit down. Two, one more time, single or both legs. Either way is fine. Up and three. Now, if you're doing single leg, no, remember to change the foot. So, other foot up and exhale down. Two, inhale. Exhale. And last one. Inhale and we stay up here. Now, we come into our forward bend. Maybe keep the chair with you. So, what you can do is come into a forward bend here with your arms resting on the seat of the chair. If not, you think this is not giving you enough of a stretch? Feel free to place your palms onto the lower rung of the chair. If not, onto blocks, on the ground, grabbing hold of the toes. Any variation is fine. Choose something that works for you today.
and I'm going to stay here. So if any one of you wants to maintain this, please know this itself is a very good posture to hold it. And we are going to be here for a count of nine. Feel free to close your eyes. Another modification is elbows down. Eight. Seven. The longer you hold, you may want to go a little deeper into the position. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, one, and rise up. Let's move the chair out of the way. So, coming to stand on the mat, whenever you're ready, hands on the waist, feet parallel to each other, pull the navel in, lengthen the spine, and see if you can lift your one foot off the ground. If that is comfortable, take the right foot against the left leg, either across the shin or higher up if that's comfortable. Palms can be together in Namaskar. If balance is challenging, you can have your hands parallel to the floor. If you're very comfortable with this, take your hands up overhead and come into Urdhvahasta variation. Choose any variation that's comfortable for you. And now let's hold for five more. Four. Three. Two and one. And coming out of the posture is also equally important. So don't release it quickly. Gently place your foot back down. Just rock back and forth on your feet a little bit. Get grounded on both feet. And we now repeat this on the left side. So first lifting the left foot up. This can be tree pose as well if this is what is more comfortable. Otherwise find your variation as I showed in the previous posture. Palms in any of the options parallel like this or up overhead. Navel is strong, you're trying to lengthen the spine, feet are actively or the all toes rather, one foot is on the ground, actively pressing into the mat for five more. Breathing deeply, four, three, very good, two, and last one, remember, releasing the posture with control as well should be a part of the practice. Next, we are going to move into triangle pose, but I'm going to modify triangle. So my right foot is wedged against the wall in the space between the wall and the floor. My left foot is, is in line with the arch of the right foot. So the feet are in alignment, not randomly placed. From here, let's take both the hands up. And by actively engaging the back foot, let's make a dynamic triangle pose. Exhale as you lean towards the left. Inhale back up. Reach up, find length. Exhale. Inhale up. Let's do five more. So exhale as low as you can go, maintaining the hands parallel to each other. That's one. Exhale, not collapsing the elbows. Up for two. Not Losing awareness of the neck, right? So neck is aligned. Three, two more, four, and up. One more time, five, and up. We will do five more. But those of you who have a yoga belt can use that. If you don't have a belt, any stole or any dupatta or anything that allows you to hold on to it will do. So I've folded my belt a couple of times to make it about shoulder width and now we are going to repeat that five times. Four, five, I'm not letting the belt slack at any point. Four, keep reaching. Three, and up. Two, last one, exhale and now you can release the belt and move into full triangle pose, reaching the right hand up overhead. So it's important to find the right posture here. You have a lot of support from the wall, so press into the back foot. That means you can avoid collapsing, you can actually find length in the spine, and you can take your right hand overhead or pointing towards the ceiling. 
Let's be here for five, four, three, two, and one. Now what we're going to do is slowly lean as if we are moving into side angle. So let's actually hold side angle for just for a couple of moments to find that distance between the feet. My knees above the ankle, not ahead, not forward. So stacking it directly above the ankle. Let's take one more breath here. And as you exhale, bring the hand down, walk your left hand forward and start lifting the right foot up off the ground. And if it's comfortable, take it higher, higher and higher. If it's not comfortable, you can modify it by using a block or even a chair. Place it in front of you and let's work with this for five more. And over time you can keep lifting. Four doesn't have to happen today. Three, two, one and slowly release. Come back up. We have to do this on the other side. So I'm going to turn around. I don't have an option, so I'm going to be facing away from the camera. So again, setting up for triangle. Right foot in line with the arch of the left foot. Reach both hands up. Dialing. Exhale. Inhale up. One. We do five of these. Exhale. Inhale up for two. Exhale. Inhale up for three. Two more. Exhale. Inhale and exhale for five and then reach up. For the next one, either repeat the same or we will do with the belt like we did before. So let's go for it. Exhale, inhale, one or two. Rise up, three and up. Release the belt and fold full triangle. Left fingertips pointing towards the ceiling or going up overhead like that in an L shape. Let's find the posture. Press into the back foot to find that nice engagement to really understand triangle pose. For five. Four. Remember to keep shoulders in alignment as well. If left shoulder is falling forward, try to bring it directly above the right shoulder. All right. Let's make it side angle. To make it side angle, you may need to walk the foot forward a bit. Let's hold this variation for two breaths only. Inhale. Exhale. And then inhale. As you exhale, walk your right foot forward, fingertips forward, start lifting the left foot up off the ground. If you would like, you can modify by having a chair or a block underneath your hands. So let me see if I can do this on this side, so I can at least be facing the camera rather than my back. Let's hold here for five, four, three, Two and one, then slowly release, rise up, come to Tadasana. And I'm going to turn sideways to show you what we are going to do first. Those of you who did the practice with me yesterday will know what this is. This is ankle stretching breathing. So palms onto the quads as you inhale, lift up. And as you exhale, bring the hands and the heels down at the same time. Let's do this nine times. Inhale. Exhale for two, inhale up, exhale for three, exhale, trying to bring the hands and the feet back down, heels back down at the same time, four, 
And remember, you can always come up just halfway if that's more comfortable for you. That's five, now six. Let's keep going slowly. We're going to do three of these kriyas and each kriya is going to help you access more lung capacity. So this is the first one. Number eight. And last one, nine. Inhale deeply and exhale slowly come back. For the second one, bring your palms together in front of you and as you inhale, expand the chest up. Make sure there's enough space available for you and exhale, bring the palms back together. Nine of these as well. So inhale, create expansion, take the hands back. Exhale, bring the palms together. What you want to make note of here is that you don't jut the chest forward or thrust the hips forward in order to get that expansion. Keep the spine, keep the ribs where they are. You're trying to find that stretch across the shoulders. That was three, I think. So four. Nice deep inhale and slow exhale. Coordinate the movement with the breath. So even though I am giving a count, it's all right if you are breathing at a slower or faster pace than that. Our breath is unique to us, so honor that. Six or seven now, let's do two more. Inhale, exhale. One more time, inhale and exhale. For the third one, interlock the fingers, rest the palms on the chest. Elbows are not out, elbows are fully relaxed by the side of the body. So now as you inhale, flip the palms up, reach up, get really tall, pull up and exhale, bring the hands down. So inhale, reach up, one, really get tall, no need to lift the heels now and rest back, back down. For two, exhale, three, make sure you take nice deep breaths both in breaths and out breaths as you do this movement. Four. Five. If you would notice, each of these movements was activating a different part of the lungs. If you really tune in and notice, you may even observe that you're able to breathe in different sections, maybe the lower and the middle. And now for this one, the uppermost part of the lungs. Let's do two more. Inhale. Can you feel this movement across the collarbones? Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Reach up. And exhale. Release. Again, coming to Tadasana. And for a couple more breaths, now just tune in to how it feels now compared to when you started the class. So let's just take two breaths here, eyes closed. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Just make a mental note of how your breath feels now. Let's do a couple of shoulder stretches now. So what I'm going to do first, let me show it to you this side. I'm going to face the wall. So if you see my feet are close to the wall, my left hand in this case is extended out and my right fingertips are on the wall. My right fingertips are like this. And then I simply start turning, turning, turning to face and turning my toes out and looking diagonally as much as is comfortable and stopping wherever it is my maximum. So I've shown it to you here, let me show it this way. So my right hand now is extended out I'm flat pressed against the wall, I start turning my toes out and I'm using my left hand to a little bit gently turn myself into this twist. And now let's breathe here. You should be feeling this stretch somewhere around the armpits, the front of the shoulders, it's your pecs, it's all right, wherever you are feeling it, let's just hold. One more thing, don't fall or lean onto the wall, I'm actually pressing away from it. So, five more. Breathe in. Five breaths, not counts. Fourth breath, inhale, or rather the second breath in the fourth count, backwards. Three, inhale. Exhale. The more you inhale deeply, the deeper the stretch will get. Four. So 
So try to access that full lung capacity, creating expansion across the chest, across the ribs, and one more. And exhale. All right, let's turn now to the other side. Same thing we know, so let's quickly move into this posture. Set yourself up here. And enjoy that nice stretch. This is also a very good stretch to do if you've spent a lot of time working on the computer. And I'm going to do a couple of variations of it as well. But this is where we start. So let's take our five breaths now. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale for four. Exhale. Inhale for three. Exhale. Two. Exhale and last one. Take a deep breath in. Notice how that feels across the shoulder. And exhale it out. Let's come back to face the wall and we are going to do a variation of this. And I'm going to take my hands a bit diagonally up. So this is parallel to the ground. This is close to the ears. I bisect this angle and stand diagonally away from the, and take my hand diagonally out. And now from here, you will turn out again. So if you see from this angle, it's neither too close nor too far back. It's diagonally out and let's hold now. So this is a little bit more challenging, so be mindful in case you're not able to stretch this particular posture as much as you did the previous one, that's totally fine. So just do your best and we'll just hold it for a count of seven. So seven, six, not breaths, simply counts, five, four, three, Two, one, and let's turn. Diagonally out. Find that position that feels good, it feels relaxing, it feels like, oh my, I'm getting such a good stretch. Find that position and now let's hold for the count of seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, and slowly release, come back. Now that we are next to the wall, let's do one more shoulder stretch. And for that, what we're going to do is I'll give you one variation only. Let's stick with one, because if you put me up next to a wall, I can really go on and on throughout for one hour here. So we are going to do a variation of puppy pose. So I'm going to have my forearms against the wall at a comfortable height. And then I'm going to try to bring the chest in line with the shoulders. Now, if you notice, I'm not sinking the chest towards the ground, so I'm not hyperextending today. I am just trying to bring the spine parallel to the floor. So there's a big difference between this and this. So in this one, I'm not sinking the chest to the ground. I'm trying to get the stretch mostly from the lats. So let's hold here now for a count of nine. Or I'm keeping a mental count, you should just hold. You can even do this against a, against a shelf or like a, a ledge, so you can rest your elbows on that rather than your forearm on the wall. Now I really want you to give up that need to look like you're doing a very deep stretch by allowing the chest to come down like this. I cannot emphasize that enough, these are two different postures. So let's hold the version that I'm sharing today with the spine close to parallel to the floor. Let's hold for five, four, three, two, one, and then release. Let's come back to sit on the mat now. Any comfortable posture of your choice. I have taken Vajrasan. You can even sit up on a chair. That's totally fine. So today's practice, we will begin with the yoga belt. And let me show it with the belt first, and then I'll give you a variation. So what we're going to do is we are going to wear this belt around the ribs. So what's happened to my belt? <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's 
gotten wound up. What we're going to do is tighten it up comfortably, not super tight, enough that it is around your lower ribs. So the bony part of the ribs, if you palpitate them, you will find it. They're not the fleshy part around the navel. They're about two to three inches above the navel. Or it could be different for some of us. And the belt is loose enough that I can slide my hand through, but it is still staying in place. What we are going to do now is as you inhale, I want you to press into the belt with the ribs. So now the belt becomes tighter. It's harder for me to put my hand through and exhale. Now the belt is loose again. Inhale. Exhale. And so find that right uh, tightness for the belt, which gives you space to breathe, enough space to breathe. But it doesn't fall off when you exhale. So you can do this with a dupatta or something similar, but it's just not as, uh, as, uh, as what do I call it, as customizable as a belt can be. And if you don't have a belt, another way to modify is, let me get the belt out of the way. Those who have a belt can already begin this practice. It's super relaxing and it's very soothing. And those who don't, we can place our hands like this. So circling the waist around the lower ribs as you inhale. Feel the expansion around the ribs. Exhale. Relax. So use your hands to give you that feedback which we are trying to get through the belt. Or even a regular belt could do. Feel free to experiment with something. And now let's take about 9 to 10 breaths more here. As you are working on building awareness of the lower ribs, don't start pulling in the belly to expand the chest. The breath is like a wave. It starts from the navel, rises all the way up to the collarbones. So the belly still rises, just that more awareness or expansion you are creating against the ribs. So let's continue. I will give you some moments in silence to practice and I will practice right here with you. All right, continue to breathe. I almost got lost in my, in my practice there, but I hope you are also feeling that soothing sensation that this practice brings. So now you've learned a new way to enhance breath awareness, which you can use anytime that you are on an empty stomach. So now let's move on to our second technique today. Let me take off the belt. And we are going to do deep belly breathing while lying down on our back. So let's lie down with the knees together and feet out. So this is the position I mean, knees are together, feet are out, that's kind of relaxing for the lower back. Hands on the navel and the belly, abdomen. Now just like the belt was helping you deepen your awareness of the rib cage, allow the hands to deepen your awareness of the navel. The belly rises and falls as you breathe in and out. Taking your entire focus and attention to the breath. And try to understand the very foundational process of breathing. What happens when the air enters the nostrils? Enters your lungs? Pushes the diaphragm down, creating expansion in the belly and pushes the ribs out, creating expansion around the chest. It even pushes a bit against the collarbones. So the air wants to take up space in the body. And it won't be able to do so if there is any kind of rigidity or stiffness. 
And do you know what creates rigidity and stiffness in the physical body? Not just our posture, even our thoughts, our emotions. Anger can make us rigid. Anxiety can freeze us. Fear can make us rigid as well. So when you gently allow the breath to flow without too much effort, it helps us counterbalance all of those feelings and emotions as well. Taking a couple of moments here to continue to breathe in silence. Observing the rhythm of your breath, the rise and fall of the belly. And now let's move on to our third posture, which is going to be lying down on our belly. So let's turn to come in a prone position. Now proning is being practiced a lot these days for COVID patients as well. So I'll share with you a couple of ways to do proning. Number one is our Makarasan variation, which is your one palm on top of the other, forehead on the first, on the top hand. And you can, if you would prefer, turn your head to one side. Some people prefer that, so you can do that. Take 10 breaths with your head to one side and then remember to take 10 breaths with the other hand on top and the head to one side. Or if you are comfortable, forehead on the ground. So those of you who would like, or anyway, let's all of us before I move on to other variations, take about five breaths in this prone position. This time, as you are here, you will experience the ribs and the belly both pressing into the ground. So now you can develop even stronger awareness of your breath, actively pressing against gravity. Think of your lungs like two balloons, they inflate. And to find space, now your mat, your entire mat is giving you feedback. As you have to press against it to get that full breath in. And now that you have done this practice lying down on your belly, let's do this practice while lying down on the side. So while you're lying down on the side, you can take your hands to your rib cage and breathe in and out there. Release the head down. And now again, you will be able to experience that breath moving in and out of the body. Finding some awareness in the sides. Let's take two more breaths here. And turn over to lie down on the other side. You can simply turn over and gonna flip around. So we can do this now on the left. So hands again are not on the waist, they're on the bony part of the ribs. And as you breathe in, you should feel that part moving. Most of your breath comes through the belly breathing, about 80% of it. The rest of it is also important to find that full lung capacity. But remember that whichever breath you practice, you should not start pulling the navel in unless you're doing a breathing kriya like Kapal Bhati or Bhastrika for all other practices. Navel expands when you breathe in. Let's take two more breaths. All right. 
Now from here, if you would like, you can do the practice one more time or you can move on to your meditation. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again next time.